Welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Allie Wilkins. I'm a priestess. I'm an oracle. I'm an author. And ultimately, all of the work that I do is just sharing ancient feminine wisdom based on how I remember it and also based on what I've studied. And I'm pretty obsessed with this subject. So I have this YouTube channel basically as a way to share what I'm learning as I'm learning it or as I've embodied it in a deeper way. So I'm excited for our subject today, which is the dark feminine energy. And the first thing I want to say before we start is please share your comments, your thoughts, your experiences in the comments, because I really like reading them, but also it can give other people other perspectives so long as you're respectful um, or can give other people, you know, just like nuanced stuff, just fun to read. So please always share that in the comments and engage with the video so that more people can see it, aka give it a thumbs up. If you like the video, share it with your friends if you like it. Um, so today we're going to talk about the dark feminine frequency, which I think is really misunderstood as it's sort of grown. This idea of what it is has really grown on social media, which is awesome. However, only one of the archetypes is being shown, and that is the archetype of the seductress, because basically people now think that the dark feminine is just a baddie. And if you don't know what a baddie is, a baddie is basically a, a woman who is like sensual and confident and she has high standards and she dresses um, in a way that's usually like very form fitting stuff, which is all this stuff is fine, right? It's just, there's a tip, there's like a look to the baddie. She has a look and she has this energy of like, you're never going to hurt me. You're not going to be able to get to me. It's, I'm not going to open up to you. Like I have an air of mystery and I'm sort of like enchanting and alluring, which all this stuff is like delicious, right? However, this is only one of the archetypes of the dark feminine. And also one of the things I'm going to be talking about um, in the realm of the dark feminine, which is a seven week course that I'm about to start Um we're going to be talking about the seductress and how my perspective is that we've been seeing the seductress wrong all along. And I have one of my, I'm so excited about this. I have one of my good friends, my sisters coming in to teach about this because she holds this embodiment of these, of the seductress in a way that I have never seen it. And I'm like, this is the seductress. What we've been seeing is the energy of more of the femme fatale. So let's just start with the energy of the seductress. We're going to go through the five archetypes just briefly. And like I said, in the realm of the dark feminine, we're going to be going into each of these for a whole week. So we're going to have a group call where we're going to talk about this in depth. I'm going to be offering workbooks, which my workbooks are like really in depth. You can come back to them a zillion times and you're going to be able to deepen in them. And it's they're just phenom. So you're going to get all that. And we're going to go into each of these archetypes way deeper. I'll put the link down in the comments if you would like to join us. Um, so the seductress, we have been taught that the seductress is the femme fatale. The literal definition is like a woman who is utilizing her charm and seduction to hurt uh, hurt men who come into her life like that's literally the definition of a femme fatale she is hurting the people around her particularly men and that's not like the healed feminine right so one of the other things we're going to be touching on this is super important to understand the dark feminine a lot of the ways that we have seen her portrayed is in a wounded state and what we have to do as we learn to embody this archetype is learn how we are portraying her in a wounded state and then bring her into the healed self so that we develop mastery over all the different archetypes. And we're going to have some natural tendencies to be um, more comfortable with certain archetypes and then some that are stretchier. And I did this poll on my Instagram channel and asked which of the archetypes are you guys most uncomfortable with or most resistant towards and like 75% of people said the seductress. So I'm really excited for my friend Livy, who's going to be coming in this space to share how she embodies this. And we're going to have a conversation of how I saw her embodying this and I see her embodying this. 
along with a lot more information about the seductress in a separate group call. Um, so anywho, the seductress, we have seen her as the femme fatale. And so we think that when we're being in our dark feminine energy, it means that we kind of have to be in this like untouchable, super seductive, like extremely confident state. And that is just one of the archetypes. And like I said, that is a one of the one of the angles that we could see her but I really want to rewrite the whole definition of the seductress so one of the things we're going to be looking at with the seductress too is the relationship to the serpentine priestesses and this is where I love this energy because this is ultimately where that originates from the serpentine priestesses would have been utilizing the energy of the serpent of the snake and you can imagine you know like the imagery of the snake charmers who get kind of like charm the snake into doing whatever the person wants them to do and working with that like undulating kundalini energy um and again we're going to talk about how to do that and make ensuring that we're using it with for the highest good of all anything that i teach i'm never going to be teaching you anything with connection to manipulation, to deceit, to illusion. I don't roll with that. So we're going to be doing high magic. So we're going to be looking at how to use all these different archetypes for the, for the betterment of humanity, for the betterment of yourself and for your highest self to really thrive in that. So that's all I'm going to say for now. The first archetype we're actually going to start with is the witch, the witch archetype. And I would like to call this the female magician because the word witch has a lot of connotation to it. A witch is really just a priestess that didn't have a temple, right? Witches we would see existing only during times that the goddess lineages were not allowed to be like open. They were not, the, the goddess temples had been burned down, right? They didn't have a place to practice. And all that they were practicing was earth magic, was like honoring the, the rhythm of the earth as their god or as their um, source, right? So the all the storylines obviously of the witch being like you know the woman with a huge nose and a big wart on her nose that's like eating children like an Hansel and Gretel like all that stuff has just been made up to scare people about what a witch actually is however like anything the witch can also have a shadow side if we're just going to talk about the magical side of the witch utilizing black magic doing hexes or curses or spells on people to hurt people that sort of thing but we're going to be looking at the archetype of the witch um, and all of that energy, we're not going to teach you how to do that stuff, but we're going to look at, you know, some educational content around what a witch is, what happened to the witches. And I have another YouTube video I'll put up in the corner here that you can watch about that. But what we're going to be looking at a lot here is the witch wound, because I would say every woman and probably every person genuinely who has had any other lifetime on the planet has been impacted by the witch wound. And what that means is that if in other lifetimes, you would have seen people be killed for expressing their truth. You would have seen people killed sometimes literally just for being a woman, just for having long hair, just for making herbal tea, just for attending a childbirth, like literally things that have nothing to do with witchcraft. You would have seen people who would have been labeled as witches, killed in the town square, you would have potentially had to turn in, like, you could have either had someone turn you in as a witch in other lifetimes, or you could have seen neighbors, you know, they would basically torture women until they would give up other people's names. And at a certain point, anybody is going to give up people's names when you're at a certain threshold of pain, right? So there's a lot of wounds that emerge from this space. So what we're really going to be working with the witch wound is how to feel safe in expressing your magic, how to feel safe in expressing your truth, how to feel safe in expressing your uniqueness, whether that's you, you know, doing candle magic or you as an oracle or you um, just being yourself without masks. You know, we're going to go really deep into this one because this is something that uh, most people who come into my world or who are clients or friends or whatever, like most of, most of those people have this wound pretty deeply. And so there's a lot of times past life work that can really, really help in understanding this and giving it context. And of course, this um, archetype is heavily connected to the throat chakra and us being silenced. And so sometimes that can look like um, being scared to speak your truth, or for example, being scared to come on here 
and make a video like this and to share your truth in that way. Um, so this is a really big one. That's why we're going to be starting with this. Um, and I also just want to say, if you have this, if you notice this in yourself, this course would be a phenomenal place for you to be in because you're going to be exposed to other women who are doing this very freely and, or some of them might be really nervous still in it. They might still be very constricted in that space. So you're going to see people who are holding these archetypes at a varying level. Um, and that's going to be really opening, eye opening for you. And also I'm giving the opportunity for people to do what I'm calling a dark feminine attunement. And this is just a specific Akashic records reading where I'm going to look at all these archetypes within your energetic field and look at, okay, which are the ones that you have the most proficiency in, which are the ones that you are most constricted in and what needs to happen so that you can free yourself so that you can expand yourself in those archetypes. So I'll put the link for that in the comments. You can book that separate of the course, or you get a discount on it. Um, I think it's like 25% off or something. If you book it as, and you're also in the course. So I'll have that, both of those links in the comments. Um, so yeah, the next, and also and within each archetype, we're going to be looking at a lot of different things. We're going to be looking at the history of the archetype. We're going to be looking at how you can embody it. We're going to, I'm going to be doing activities with you and giving you homework to look at where your edges are and to stretch you in those. But also we're going to be looking at animal totems that are connected to this. We're going to be looking at the goddesses specifically who are connected to certain archetypes that you can work with to help you expand in certain areas. Um, so that's the witch archetype. So then another one we have is the wild woman archetype. This covers, this one actually has a lot of like kind of mini archetypes within it. Um, the wild woman archetype, I actually think is one of the ones that people have the most trouble with, but don't realize it. Um, the wild woman, I don't want you to think about her as Kali. So I have a picture of Kali here. A lot of people see Kali as the wild woman. She definitely has that embodied within her, but she actually displays a different, she, we're, she's, we're going to talk about her in the liberator archetype. This is my favorite one. And I think one of the most beautiful and the most powerful, although they all are, but um, this is one that people don't really ever teach about. And so I'm super excited to be doing that. Um, the wild woman does not care what anyone thinks about her. The wild woman is way outside of the box of, of being considered like normal or approved of or validated. And sometimes, of course, this can be like an imbalance. Um, when I say imbalance, that's like, who's to say what is balance and what's not? Probably only we can say that within ourselves, And our truth of that might actually change throughout time, right? We might think that we're really balanced in something during one period and then be like, well, I was way out of balance. <laughs> so this is sort of like an internal criteria probably, but the wild woman I think is the most freeing because if you can learn to embody the wild woman, then you stop caring what other people think of you to a certain extent. Cause we always are going to have this like survival mechanism of wanting to like, you know, in the past, if you were kicked out of the tribe, if you, like we're talking 2000 years ago, a thousand years ago, 10,000 years ago, we have that survival instinct of like, we need to be in with the tribe so that, cause we're going to die if we go out on our own, that still lives and breathes in us, but it's just not really accurate today. You know, it's not really valid anymore. So looking at our life and seeing where are you afraid to be totally insane? Where are you afraid for people to like not understand you? Where are you afraid for people to misunderstand you? And where are you like dulling yourself so that people will like you or you can, so that you can get the job or so that you can get the man or the partner, right? Where is it that you're, that you're suffocating yourself? This is a really big archetype. And I think that we have a lot of room to grow in this one just collectively. So I'm excited to go into this archetype with you as well. And like I said, there's a lot of archetypes within this. You could call this like the primal woman. You could call it the mad woman. You could call this, um, you know, like the imagery of Diana in the woods, just kind of this like goddessy witch woman who lives out in the woods by herself. And she's just like, fuck society. <laughs> like, I don't need that you know? So there's a lot of different representations of the wild woman, which we're going to get into. So also with the wild woman, we can see people in history like Joan of Arc or like the story of Thecla 
who Thecla, I think I'm saying her name right, she, her and Joan of Arc are very, very similar, and they could have even potentially been the same soul or something. They were in different timelines, I think. But both of them basically stood up for their desires in a time that you would 100%, 100% for sure be killed for it. And um, they really changed history. So we're going to talk about both of them specifically in this archetype. The next archetype that we're going to look at is one of the ones that I have the highest amount of embodiment in, and this is the truth teller. And the truth teller could also be known as the seer or the oracle. So she is someone who really has to learn the art of speaking truth. And I, I'm kind of surprised because I think a lot of people think that they have this embodied but they don't because they're you're afraid of what people think of you. This is a thread that goes throughout all the archetypes, just like the good girl mask. I did a whole email series and several posts on my page um, around the good girl mask being the like completely blocking dark feminine energy. The good girl mask inhibits every single archetype. And so we're going to be talking about that also in this course, in this experience. Um, the truth teller she cannot care how her truth is received. However, she has to have, she has to learn the art of how to deliver said truth. Because if truth is delivered in a way that someone can't receive, it's you wasted your breath. And I've had to learn this deeply as I was born super blunt and I hurt so many people's feelings. And the shadow side of the truth teller is that you can use your words so sharply that you can do a lot of damage to other people, but it's just like comes naturally to you. So not the damage part, but you know, just words come easily. And sometimes people are not ready to receive their truth. Sometimes they're not ready to see that reflection. And so they might just project it back at you or it's, it might just end up, you know, costing a lot of energy for you as the truth teller. That's just not worth it. And this is also, if you are familiar with human design, um, being a projector, I'm a projector when you're using Western astrology and human design. And one of the things that they talk about in that is you have to be invited in to tell the truth. So we're going to be looking at a lot of these sort of things about how to, first of all, how to get clearer sight and how to be able to access your deepest truth, not the ego's truth, because those are two different things not your personal agenda potentially, but how do you actually see truth, divine truth clearly? And then how do we articulate that? With all these archetypes, we're also going to be looking at the shadow side so that we can be aware of the potential ways that these archetypes can be used poorly. And I also really want to enunciate this like tenfold that the lighter sides of the goddess and I don't really like using the term light but like you know light and dark it just kind of makes sense they also have their own shadows for example a goddess the compassionate goddess if she doesn't have boundaries she's gonna be like fucked right we there's shadow sides to all of it that could end up being someone who just like fawns over everybody and doesn't have any like um I don't know. It's just problematic. You know what I mean? So this isn't the shadow side doesn't only apply to the dark goddesses or the dark feminine frequency. It also applies to the light frequencies um, or the lighter or the ones in between. Right. So the truth teller and the seer is one of the ones that I hold that I was like born with in body, <laughs> but I've had to learn the art and the mastery of how to use my words in a way that they can be received. So I'm going to be teaching that. Um, which is something I don't think I've ever really taught before, which is kind of cool. The last archetype we're going to be looking at is a liberator. And there's two energies here that we're going to be looking at a few other ones, but these are the ones I want to bring in today. You might be surprised. So Kali and both Mary Magdalene are, are, are examples of liberators. And so I kind of like don't want to give too much away about this one, but this energy is incredibly important when we're looking at the transformational aspects of the liberators um, or when we're looking at the transformational aspect of the dark feminine energy itself. And these are the energies that are going to free you from attachments, from old versions of yourself. These are really the energy, the liberator within you also can do this for other people. But this is really the dark feminine frequency that kind of comes comes into your life. And I, so I wanted to include this as an archetype as well. We're also going to be touching throughout all of them, the energy of sovereignty, the energies of freedom, the energies of wildness, the energies of 
being yourself and allowing yourself to go into places that society does not approve of, because that's the whole thing about all of this. The dark feminine is only this sort of like, you could call her this like exotic, like people are like, Ooh, I want to be in my dark feminine. It's because she's been suppressed. So we don't know how to be in her for thousands of years, the generations above us. This doesn't of course apply to every single human on the planet, but in general, the generations above us could not embody her energy because they didn't live in a world that it, they would be safe to do so. It really wasn't that long ago that women were still going to psych wards for, and this still happens today too, but before people could be sent in, I think it happened a lot more frequently when they were like out of control, you know, all this stuff is very, very recent. So the other part of this that is very important is as you are deepening into all of this, all the different archetypes and just the frequency of the dark feminine, you very well may experience a lot of fear. You may experience past life stuff come up. You may experience like freeze because in other lifetimes, you may have had been severely hurt. You could have severely hurt other people who are holding this energy. So that's why I'm offering that dark feminine attunement so that we can look at where are the blocks or the holdups within your field around the dark feminine energy? Because I've had so many clients that we've looked at past lives, cleared those past lives. Sometimes there's like aspects of the soul stuck in those lifetimes. And so we, we do a soul retrieval, bring that aspect back. And then they'd have no fear around it. And they're like doing things they never did before with really no effort. You know, there's not this like great fear around things. So it can free things up really quickly. So that's why I'm including that here. Um, so let me just think, is there anything else that I want to share around this dark feminine frequency? I really just want to say, stay wild. You know, there's no one look to the dark feminine. There's no, like I started this video off with, the dark feminine is not the baddie. That's one aspect of it. And it would depend on how each person is holding that, if it's really imbalanced or not, because the whole point of learning all these archetypes of the dark feminine, of the all the different aspects of the divine feminine, is so that we can move between shapeshift, between all of the archetypes as needed in our life, not so that we're just holding one archetype. And you will have more strength and more just like um, more of a natural archetype that you hold there will be an archetype that you do hold most naturally. However, we want to be able to develop mastery in all of them. And if there's something that you're really uncomfortable with, or one of the archetypes you are like, whoa, that's like really scary or stretchy, like that's where we want to go. That's where our growth and expansion is. Um, and I just want to say too, in all of my work, all of this is inner work. None of this is like, we're not doing this so you can get the man or so that you can lose 30 pounds or so that you can, you know, be super seductive. I don't know. We're not doing it for that reason. We're doing it to expand your own feminine frequency. We're doing it for the inner growth. We're doing it for the remembrance. And if external things come like beautiful, but we're not, this isn't a personal development class. This isn't a self-help channel, right? Where you're focused on external stuff. This is inner expansion because the, an inner depth, because that's really what the ascension process is, which is what I teach. So yeah, <laughs> we also have Hathor overlooking up here. She's not a dark feminine frequency necessarily, but um, um, I feel like she actually has a little message since she's sort of like overlooking us here. So Hathor is an Egyptian goddess. She is known as the queen of civilization. Her flip side is Sekhmet, who is sort of a wild sort of rageful goddess. I love Sekhmet so much. And I am going to be creating actually a lot more about the temple, the temple and the work of Sekhmet. Um, but I do have that as a temple available now if you want to come in for an eight-week experience with Sekhmet. But anywho, um, I'm just kind of hearing Hathor saying, you know, that she does demonstrate some of the dark feminine frequencies because she, even though she was this sovereign, powerful queen, she had a consort, but he wasn't really like, he's not really talked about with her. Even though she was this sovereign queen frequency, and highly respected, highly revered. She also was like a crazy party girl. She was like, um, there's a lot of stories about her, you know, like flashing her genitals to get the other gods to calm down or to get them to laugh and like ease up a really serious moment where they could have gone to war. And like, there's a lot of energy around her being really fun and light and playful, 
perhaps in the society, then it would have been, I think, more, more um, approved of, but in a space that it's like, that's not fitting her typical role, right? Like a queen wouldn't be like going around flashing people that would be seen as being inappropriate. And so it's like, she's holding all of these opposing characteristics that don't fit our societal view of something that is literally the dark feminine frequency if we were lumping it into one thing it's like how are you going to hold your freedom and sovereignty in yourself by being your unique self in a way that does not conform to anything and i this might trigger you how you have um look at how you have showed up in the last few years with authority telling us we have to do certain things did you follow the rules perfectly because you were afraid to get in trouble did you hide your truth because you didn't want to upset people did you you know were you were you open and free in expressing your truth with others while being able to hold yourself in a grounded state and also be open to other people's opinions or thoughts just those are just some questions to kind of prompt that but looking at what is the state you've been in, in the last few years this will tell you a lot about um, you know, in relation to global things, of course, is what I mean. This is going to show you a lot about your embodiment of the dark feminine and your comfort within her frequency. For example, how I was saying that I really hold the energy of the truth teller. I am very comfortable sharing my opinion and I'm getting, I'm doing this in a more mature way now where I can be open to other people's perspectives, but either way, I'm sharing my truth in a way that I'm grounded in that if someone came to attack it, it doesn't really bother me because I'm able, I can hold my truth and also see someone else's truth at the same time. But a lot of people might like cower in fear to share their truth because they're afraid that it's going to hurt someone's feelings or ruffle someone's feathers, or they might, other they might be judged, God forbid, <laughs> like, you know, so it's, it's, those are just some questions to think about how you've been embodying that frequency um, over the last few years, or even with the situation happening right now in, in the world. And if you're watching this later, there's probably another situation happening that, no, please, <laughs> please no. But we can always be looking at how we're showing up in that space. So I want you to just think about for a second, and I would love if you put this in the comments, which of these five archetypes do you feel the most strongly rooted in? So the witch, the wild woman, the seductress, the truth teller or the liberator and then which of these do you feel the most resistance towards so again the witch the wild woman the serpentine seductress the truth teller and the liberator which of those do you feel the most resistance towards and please put those in the comments just so other people can see um because i have different audiences everywhere and on instagram most people are most resistant to the seductress but it could be totally different here on youtube so yeah. So if you want to learn more, of course, I would love to invite you into the seven week experience called the realm of the dark feminine. We're going to have an opening and closing ceremony where we go into the energies of the dark feminine itself, um, receiving channeled messages, things like that. Also just with a lot of education. And then we're going to go in the sandwich part of that. We're going to go into the five archetypes of the dark feminine energies and we're going to have seven weekly calls. They're going to be held on Sundays at 1 p.m. If you're joining us in this live group that starts October 29th, um, this will be available afterwards as a self-study experience. But to be honest, most people don't do. If you sign up for a course, it can be very hard to commit to when there's nothing holding you accountable like a live call. Right. So and also there's it's going to be at a higher price. I always do my first groups. Um, of a specific course at the lowest price at the best price and I continue to raise it as I add more things so when it goes to self-study the price is not going to go down it's going to increase actually so if you're interested I would join it now um, and if you have any questions you can email me aliewilkinsabundance at gmail.com um, but all the information is at the website I'll put it in the link in in the comments below and in the description um that's it for today. I think you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know any thoughts you had. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, if you want more videos like this. And also if you're interested in booking a dark feminine attunement, that's just an Akashic Records journey that's specifically focused again on that dark feminine energy and where you're holding it and where you're not holding it. We're going to look at that really in depth in your energetic field. You can book that. That'll also be at the link in um, the comments below. And, or you can just book a regular old Akashic session um which are super profound and powerful I didn't mean to like diminish them like that but 
Okay, that's it. I will see you guys next week for the next YouTube video. And I hope you have a beautiful week. Stay wild.